like not enough guys pay attention to it because your athleticism will only take you so far. And if you do want to play 12, 13, 14, 15 years, the older you get, the more that that's, your athleticism is going to pull back. So you really got to dial into the details. Um, there are answers on the field for what's about to happen if you pay attention to them. So that's, that's what I would expect. Tonight we got Justin Reed, 2018 third round pick for the Houston Texans. One of the top young safeties in the game. Jay Reed, what's going on, man? Happy to have you. Hey, what's up, fan, bro? Um, fan of you, man. Fan of your show. Appreciate you bringing me on to come talk a little ball. All love, man. All right, I'm going to go ahead and start to it. Tell me, first off, how was the state of Louisiana able to let you leave up out of there to go play college ball <laughs> in Northern California? You know, sometimes what they do down there is uh, they, they sometimes miss the kids in their own backyard. Um, but it was a combination of factors. Uh, I did have the scholarship, um, but my brother playing in California, along with Dwayne Aquina recently moving from Texas, where he coached Earl Thomas, Kenny Vaccaro, Sage Griffin, yeah. Michael Huff, long resume of DBs. Um, he had just went to Stanford the year before, and a combination of those two things. And, and uh, just with the opportunity, I thought that going to the West Coast would bring really what brought me away but it was a hard decision man I didn't make the decision until signing day mm, I like that yeah man Literally on signing day. I, I like that man because like I said ET that's one of my boys Michael Huff I played with him for several years out there in the Bay Area so trust me I know uh I know that coaching tree well man okay yeah. all right you've been in the league for a short time but you've been starting ever since you got to H-Town so I know you've been in the game. You and you and got your stats up. So I'm gonna go ahead and get to it. First off, hardest running back to tackle so far. Hardest running back to tackle so far, um, Christian McCaffrey. Mm. And I say that because he's just so dynamic and he's such a problem. Where in Carolina doesn't really even have an offense. Their offense is Christian McCaffrey. You mm -hmm. know, what I mean, they still manage to get away from us whenever we play them. Mm, I like that, man. That's a nice one. Sometimes I forget about Christian, man, because he's so, I guess he's so versatile and he's not like that true prototypical, at least back when I was playing, that true prototypical size, you sometimes kind of forget about him, but he's definitely, if not the best right now in the game, at least no no worse than top two, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you guys out there that are talented too. All right, now next up, toughest quarterback you've had to play against so far. Ooh, toughest quarterback. You know, I won't say Phillip Rivers. I know he's coming into the conference with the Colts. Um, but Phillip is definitely the smartest because when we did play him when he was with the Chargers, I mean, he was calling out every defense that we were in. Like, just off the jump, just calling who was blitzing, where we're going, who, who was going where. Um, but I don't think he still can complete all the same plays um, and use advantage of it. I'd say the toughest quarterback um, – might have been Drew Brees. Mm, Might have been Drew Brees, just because Drew was able to just move the, the ball around so efficiently. You know, he has that all-star receiver in uh, Michael Thomas that was his go-to guy. But when it came down to the wire, when we played him in New Orleans, they were able to make that play, those plays on the last drive to, to get him a win to kick off the season. I know what you mean. Uh, so funny that you say both of those guys, because I played against both of them in San Diego way back in the day. And man, I remember oh, yeah. I remember Drew early on, my rookie year, San Diego. He was tough. And then he left to go to the Saints. And then you get Phillip Rivers coming in. Uh first year as a starter, they went 14 and two. That you had the number one yeah. record in the AFC. And Phillip Rivers is the only quarterback in the AFC West I was never able to pick off. So I know what you mean about him being one of the toughest, man. Yeah, man. He, he he's definitely the smartest, if anything. Like, his ability to just dissect, I mean, our disguises, it was almost pointless to try and hide anything from him. He was just picking us apart with it. <laughs> I know what you mean, bro. Um, so far, best moment you've experienced so far in your short time in the NFL? Best moment? Um, man, it would have to be, it would have to be the first time that we had one uh, the AFC Championship because that was a new experience for me. It was a team effort. We were down um, playing Jacksonville. And that game wasn't really too exciting in itself. But the 
feeling in the locker room, that camaraderie of just having that, you know what I mean, that mm-hmm. that accolade of just going back to the locker room and, you know, getting the T-shirts, having the T-shirts. Yeah. Um, that was a big feeling for me. Nice. Okay. I, me- I, I definitely... Individually, individually, I'm going to still go back to um, my rookie season with the pick six. Um, because that was the first pick six that I ever had in what? my life. Right. I've gotten tackled on the two and three yard line. I can't tell you how many times, but that's the first time I made it to the end zone. Okay. Nice. Nice. Okay. Speaking of picks, I'm going to go to another one. One that you had last year against Tampa Bay, Saturday afternoon. I remember watching that game live. It looked like you yep. were playing some sort of like middle hole play, uh, middle hole type of responsibility. Yep. Walk me. I yeah, walk me through that pre-snap to when you actually made the play of everything that's going through your mind on that. Yeah, well, we know Jameis is a gunslinger. I mean, he'll throw 100 passes a game. And, you know, a lot of them are really good throws, but he also sometimes doesn't pay attention to what's happening on the backside. Mm-hmm. So through film study and through our coaches um, kind of dissecting this play, they, they relate to us what well, we have guys mm-hmm. kind of pop in from the back side of the field moving to the front side that we might be able to see one without him being able to see him mm-hmm. that's exactly what we did we disguised the two high shell um i was on the right side i came down stem down late i saw his eyes looking to my left his right and then i just kind of felt the route we just i knew that dig was coming just broke on the ball was able to get my hands on it and then made a play to the end zone i still got to find out a way to to tax charles for hitting for taking away my next pick six, man. I was, you know, you know those are so hard to come by. Yeah. You know how hard those are to come by, man. I was upset when they took it away, but it was still, it was still a pretty good play. One of man. my favorites from last year. Man, I love hearing you say about the film study because a lot of young cats, when they get into the league, they don't realize that film study. That's what's really gonna help you make a lot of plays because everybody can run, everybody can jump, yeah. everybody can fast this that, and the other. So, man. I love hearing you say that because that it's is the intellectual side of the game, man. It's all like not enough guys pay attention to it because your athleticism will only take you so far. And if you do want to play 12, 13, 14, 15 years, the older you get, the more that that's, your athleticism is going to pull back. So you really got to dial into the details. Um, there are answers on the field for what's about to happen if you pay attention to them. So that's, that's what I would encourage um, some of the young viewers that you got watching right now is pay attention to the film study because just by formation, um, a guy lining up in a position he normally doesn't ever line up in, um, those are indicators that you could use to your advantage to make plays. So true. So true, man. That's something I learned my rookie year from Charles Woodson, Namdi Asamoah, all those guys. Man, kudos to oh, you. Oh, man, you play with Charles Woodson too? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, man. Trust me, I, I ain't played with some great ones. Moss, Sap, C Wood. Yeah. Oh yeah, I ain't played with some uh, some top dogs, bro. I yeah, have. I see them jerseys hanging behind you too, man. <laughs> some impressive collection. <laughs> Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. One day, one day I need to get yours up here. I would go bet that. <laughs> we gonna get him up. All right. Okay. J Reed. Now, I'm gonna ask you just an open question. Are we going to have a football season in this pandemic? Yes. And I am confident about that. Uh, I just don't think that it will happen as soon as we think it will happen. Mm -hmm. I just don't see it happening that we're going to have training camp in two weeks and then start the season in four weeks. Especially with all the changes still currently happening um, the discussions being made on if we're even going to have a preseason game, um, the troubles that the NBA is going through. I don't think that the NFL is willing to give up the profit um, of canceling the entire season. Uh-huh. I just don't think that it will happen on schedule um, like it's being advertised right now. Yeah, but and- my job as a player is to be prepared even if that does happen. And that's why I want to ask you that because sitting back just watching from afar – I'm over here wondering, like, okay, I see a lot of the players. They're not really too uh, confident about going back with the uh, safety restrictions being kind of like in flux the way they are. I saw something the other day that the owners proposing to put 35% of the player salary in escrow, and I know ain't no player gonna be uh, gonna be down with yeah. that. So no, no, hell no. 
<laughs> I, trust me, I wouldn't be down with it either. So that's why uh, it's a very interesting uh, time that we live in because I know the owners, they're going to want this season to go on. But, you know, the players, they want to make sure that they're going to be safe, they're going to be healthy, something that they're going to be able to uh, – withstand because everybody has families everybody got wife yeah. kids, mom and, dad, things like and that. that's really the only thing i would want to push for is that for guys that do have family members loved ones that they're in close contact with that are in vulnerable situations i feel like there needs to be some system in place that allows them to opt out of being put in a predicament that might put their family members in harm's way without being fined um I don't know what the, what the new TV is, like $50,000 for, for skipping the day or skipping yeah. the game or something like that. Yeah, I think that uh, I think the NFL still has a ways to go as far as putting everything in place. That way, it's not so the, the, the waters aren't so, are, aren't so muddy. And it's very clear yeah. the path that the NFL has taken because so far, it seemed like Roger Goodell, seemed like a lot of the owners, they're not sure on how to do this thing. They just know they want to get it done. But they don't exactly yeah. know how to do it. And players today have a bigger platform. They got a much louder voice. Players just want to know, like, hey, just like uh, in the locker room or in the meet room, coach tell you we're going to run this coverage. Okay, well, coach, how are we going to run the coverage? Don't just say, hey, we're going to do this. Yeah. You got to tell us how we're going to do it. We want to know Talk that. Talk about the technique. Talk about if I'm inside, outside. We need the detail. Yeah, man. Uh, okay. I got one last question for you. Another situation that we're now in in this world right now aside from the pandemic obviously the social racial inequality obviously everybody knows about George Floyd everybody knows about Breonna Taylor everybody knows about that and we all know several years ago the kneeling started and it slowly started to pick up steam with the owners trying to push back on it how do you think this year is going to look do you think that it's going to pick up even more with the kneeling or do you think it's going to still kind of be the way it's been um, I definitely think that it will pick up more because before, four years ago, you were almost putting yourself in a vulnerable position to be attacked by fans, by the NFL itself, if you had kneeled in 2016 or really any of the years leading up to this season. I mean, I can even tell you about some of my teammates, um, Kenny Stills and Michael Thomas. They can tell you stories about some of the trials that they've went through in their fight um, for social justice and kneeling on the field. Um, but now I feel like it's a much more open space. Yeah. It's more acceptable. You won't be scrutinized as much. Um, like if it wasn't as open as it is right now. Um, and then, you know, the Texas organization has come a long way with it too. Um, with, with Cal being in charge now and with coach O'Brien, um, and the things that he said. Um, but I do think, um, with Roger Goodell's apology and the way that the NFL is attacking this and they still have a long way to go with it. Um, especially with Colin Kaepernick still not being signed to a team or anything like that. Um, but I feel like it's a step in the right direction, and I do think that it will pick up more, um, especially since the message isn't being deliberately misconstrued to be about the flag mm -hmm. instead of systemic oppression and police brutality. And the laws around the country are starting to reflect um, that our voices are being heard with that. I like that. Man, it's so funny that you mentioned that because I remember I spent uh, my last half of my last season in the league with the Texans. So I was there with K-Jack, J. Joe, GQ, Glover Quinn, all those boys. And I remember yeah, oh, geez. I remember that was the feeling that I kind of got. Now, this is back in 2012, but I remember getting that feeling of like, this is how we do things. Nobody step out of line. Everybody just straightforward ain't nobody know it don't nobody be no individual yeah. just you know just yeah. fine. so i definitely know it all comes out yeah from that same um bill pelichick tree you know yeah. what i mean it's very <laughs> like that <laughs> <laughs> i know what you mean man hey well appreciate you jay reed for coming on man definitely got to do this again i'm a big fan of yours i'm gonna definitely be watching you this season whenever it winds up starting uh definitely yeah. got you picked to be my breakout player Look to see you over there in Hawaii or Vegas or wherever the Pro Bowl going to be at this. Uh, oh, yeah. Man, but, uh, I appreciate that, man. I'm going to live up to it, too. I mean, been out here working. So I like I'm excited it, about the opportunity whenever it does come. I like appreciate it. Appreciate you having me on the show, big dog. Yes, sir.